Do you feel stressed out when it comes to writing your own resume? If so, then this video is for you. As I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process for crafting a well-organized resume. And this video is for all the working professionals, no matter which industry you come from. And before we get started, I would like to introduce myself to those of you who don't know me. My name is Niketa and I'm a Shurm Certified HR. I have over a decade of experience in hiring professionals and I'm passionate about helping job seekers in reaching their career goals. With that being said, let's get started. First thing first, as a job seeker, you should know what recruiters or hiring managers are looking for in your resume. Being a talent acquisition specialist, I look over several resumes in a day. And just so you know, resumes are never read line by line. In fact, they are skimmed over very quickly. And that's the reason we really want you to make your resume very precise to the point. And it has also been proven by most studies that most hiring managers, they don't spend over six seconds. Yes, over six seconds in deciding whether or not to select you for an interview. So relevance is the key. Not only this video help you to get an invitation for an interview, but it also prepares you to excel through in that interview. Plus, I have a bonus tip for you towards the end of the session, so stay tuned. So I'll pause here and I'll bring you to my screen and show you how to write a resume from scratch. All right, here is my Word document. And before we get into details, uh, let me quickly tell you that I have divided the entire resume writing into five major steps, or you can call them sections as well. I'd like to give you a snapshot before we dive deeper into it. Here we go. So the step one is all about your personal info. Step two is about your professional summary, which is further segregated into three subsections. It's professional summary itself and then your core competencies. And finally, if you have any certifications, awards that you would like to highlight. And the third step is all about your professional or work experience. And I would say this is the most important section on your resume, as this is the place where your recruiters or hiring managers eyes go first. And uh, definitely we're going to talk about this in much detail in a moment. And then the step four, is all about your educational credentials. And finally, the step five is about any extracurricular activities or volunteering experience. Okay, so that being said, let's talk about step one, which are your personal details. We'll start off by putting our personal info on the top center of the resume. I would highly recommend keep everything on top of your resume. It has two main purposes. First, this way you will let your hiring folks know who you are. And second, they will get to know by all what ways they can reach out to you. So this is going to be the one place where they can get all the information about you. So the first line should have your first and last name in bold. Second line should talk about your phone number, your city, email address, your LinkedIn, GitHub or portfolio link if you have any. So whichever is related to your industry, you can put that link particularly here. You don't have to have all the links here. So this is just an example what you can have here. And finally, the third line talks about your job title. So this is a job title that where your expertise lies in. So if you have experience working as a marketing specialist, so highlight that here so that it grabs the attention of your hiring managers. Oh, this is a person who is working on this technology on this area and he's looking for a similar kind of job. So just let them know right at the starting. Plus you can have a professional title next to your name. So this could be 
any certification for instance i'm shrum certified so i usually put uh, shrum cp next to my name so if you have uh, any certifications definitely you can put that next to your name so that also grabs your hiring manager's attention right away and also you can hyperlink uh, your linkedin profile or whatever portfolio you're putting in here the reason being when they click on your profile they can directly land onto that particular page and they can just have the direct access from there all right so having all these four things on the same line has a purpose because it will clear a lot of space and this way you can save limiting your entire resume in two to three pages and which is an idle requirement for any resume it should not go over three pages and if you have a vast experience try to squeeze in your experience at max in three pages and uh, you have to really think thoughtfully what are the things that you need to put on your resume and the rest of the things you can discuss during the interview all right and one most important thing i'd like to highlight you know why i earlier asked you to put your LinkedIn profile because these days most companies they look at your LinkedIn profile to cross verify for authenticity. So make sure whatever info you put over LinkedIn and on your resume, they should be alike. Now the third line we have already discussed about the job title. And for instance, if you're a re recent graduate, then definitely you can put your highest degree here in place of job title. For instance, you have just completed your master's in computer science. Then you can write something like MS in computer science and seeking opportunity in data analytics or whatever your field is. You can do that in this particular line. Either you put job title or you replace it with your highest education details. Also, if you can brag about your certifications or any licenses by placing their logo on top of your resume. So this is a place under the header, you can place the logo of the certification. And obviously it should be related to the job that you're applying for. It should make sense that why you have placed it on the resume. And uh, there is a quick note that I would like to make about the email address. I would tell you to make your email address very professional for instance, have your first name and the last name. If it is already gone, then you can have first name and your job title, something in combination, as opposed to write at me or write to me, something like that. It has to be professional. Don't make it casual, I would say. And there is also another reason for that. When you have your meaningful email address, you make it really easy for the recruiters or the hiring managers to find you in their inbox. And just by typing your name, your email immediately pops up and which is where it really gets handy for them. All right. So before we move on to the next section, I'd like to talk about the importance of having keywords or you can say key skills on your resume. Some of you might be wondering what these keywords are. I would say these are must have and nice to have skills on a job posting. Or you can also call it a job description. Let me tell you that almost all recruiters and hiring managers, they constantly look for these keywords and the content around these skills or keywords on your resume to make sure how, when, and where you have used those skills. So these are the data points that help them decide whether or not you are a potential fit. As I mentioned at the starting, recruiters or hiring managers, they review resumes really fast. And that's where highlighting the required and preferred skills become really important to grab their attention. And that being said, the places where you should use these keywords the most are under your professional summary and the professional experience, or you can call it as a work experience. So these are the two sections that should have 
most of the keywords related to the position you're applying for. This brings me to the second section, which is professional summary. So your professional summary, as I said earlier, it's segregated into core competencies, any certification and the summary itself. So always start with a professional summary and have two to three bullet points at max with high level details. So you can give a pause here and uh, look at the template that I've used here so that you can use this template, swap it with your own experience, whatever total years of experience you have, write down about your expertise and the industry experience that you have most and what kind of companies you have worked so far, whether they are Fortune 500, startup, medium size, product based, service based, whatever it is called as. Highlight that here. The main purpose is just to let them know on a high level what you have been doing, what is your primary expertise is. And the second bullet point should talk about your top one to two achievements. And you can see that in the bracket, I've put it non-measurable and measurable. For instance, if you have done something like this, let me show you an example. I've used it underneath something like this. Increase sales performance by 25% in Q2 and Q3 2018 by implementing well-defined sales and marketing programs that elevated the zonal growth. So this is an example of measurable achievement, and that's how you can give concrete details. All right. So I keep highlighting a section that I'm talking about for your easy reference. Okay. Now let's move on to core competencies. This is the second sub part of professional summary that talks about the major activities you perform on your job. For instance, I've used my example here. These are the different activities that I perform day in, day out. So that way you can get the attention of your hiring manager or recruiters right straight from here. That is what you have hands on experience on. All right. So next we go to the professional certification, any affiliations or awards. If you don't have any of those things, that's okay you can skip this step or this section, I would say. But if you do have certifications which are still valid and not expired, then do highlight them and provided they should be job related. So this is how you can jot down a few things. You can again bullet your all the job related certifications, something like this right as i'm sure i'm certified professional so i do highlight that on my resume similarly whatever certifications you have and you feel that they will give weightage to your next job then definitely you should highlight that on your resume okay and now i have a point to make here you might have experience in multiple skills but i would highly recommend that you mention only those skills on your resume, which are required in your next job. Always make a habit to review a job description thoroughly as it gives you a clear picture what a company is looking for in a potential employee. So a job description provides you all the important info that you need to address on your resume. Always keep that in mind. And that important info you will see in the form of keywords or key phrases that usually start with words must, strong, or minimum to give you an idea, such as you must have experience in Salesforce development. You should have strong experience in retail sales. A candidate should have minimum five years of experience in architecture. All right, so these were some of the examples that will help you locate key skills on a job description. But it doesn't mean that you include something that you have never worked on. You actually should have those skills. 
it's all about reorganizing and highlighting important details first. And we will talk about that in a, just a moment when we move on to the professional experience, the work experience, where you can highlight all those points. So these are the examples you include either under the responsibilities and technologies you use under this section, as well as you can use some of such examples under your professional summary where you highlight your main skills. And here are some of the examples I have used. So for under for instance, so you can definitely pause video here and look at some of these examples. You will notice that I have used examples from both technical and non-technical fields just to cover people from different industries. All right, so now moving on to the professional experience. This is the most important section on your resume. As I already said, this is the place where most recruiters and hiring managers eyes go first. They wanted to see your work progress within and across the companies. And that's the reason I always highlight start with your current or most recent work experience down to the first one. Uh, and that's the reason I've put in reverse chronological order here. And this is just a template. When you actually write your resume, just take off this line from here. Okay. Start off by putting your company name along with the city or state where it is located. And opposite to that, you can write down the duration, your tenure with the company. So always write in month and year. If you're still associated with the company, then you can write to date or else you can end with a month and year, the time you worked with that company. One, I wanted to highlight one thing here. I've seen many individuals who just write year, that's it. Only year to year, like from this year to this year, they have worked with this company. But let me tell you, don't keep your recruiters or hiring managers assuming if you started working with that company in January 2018, for example, or December 2018. Are you getting my point? So don't let them think as if you're trying to hide something. It's always better to highlight all the required things and be transparent. And that is the reason I always emphasize put the month and the year to when you write about your duration. Okay, so now let's move further down to the company description. You need to write the company description only if your company is not that known. If your company is well known, you really don't need to write about the company. And next, it's the project and the assignment brief. I know most of you must be wondering uh, that it's something uh, confidential, right? You cannot share your company client's details to the outside world. That's totally agreed. And that's a reason. Always write a client instead of actually writing the name of the client and describe about a project in a line or two. So whatever project you have, you really don't have to go into specifics just on a high level, explain what the project is all about so that the recruiters or hiring managers know the nature of work that you have done or the nature of work that you have been doing currently. All right. So next we move on to the job title and business function. The reason I've put business function in bracket because in most companies, the job titles are very generic. For instance, you might have a designation of a software engineer or a project manager, but what kind of project manager you are, what kind of software engineer you are, that you really need to highlight under the business function. You're working as a Python developer or working as a Go developer just to specify what kind of software engineer you are. Okay. And as far as the responsibilities goes, there are two different ways of writing your responsibilities. Either you can club your responsibilities with your accomplishments. If you feel that you don't have those many accomplishments, definitely you can club them together. 
but you you feel that you have good amount of accomplishments which you can highlight separately then do so so here are some of the examples that i've used which you can always refer so you can always pause and pulse look at these examples for better understanding all right and i'd also add here whenever you write your responsibilities don't go over five to six bullet points because then it will be too lengthy for the person who's reading your resume and out of those five to six bullet points your first two bullet points must talk about your expertise that align directly to the position you're applying for and then next comes your technologies whatever technology you're using on your project highlight here let the person know what kind of skill sets you know what kind of tools you have worked on or you're currently working on all right so this brings me to the next section which is your education again this is also a section where we jot down our all the education credentials in reverse order and always start off by putting your most recent degree down to the first one and these are the templates which you can use to list your degrees if you did your post graduation masters or doctor's degree highlight that followed by the area of specialization under the university name where it is located and the passing year you can include your gpa as well but i would highlight here include your gpas only if you score over three if it is less than three you can skip it altogether some of you must be wondering why we haven't placed education before the experience section and let me tell you most hiring managers and recruiters they prefer to look at your work or academic accomplishments or maybe internship details first and that's the reason always mention your work experience before your education credentials no matter even if you're a recent graduate if you have earned your full-time degree from grade a university for example mit iit oxford or harvard then always feel proud to reflect them on top of your resume undoubtedly and this brings me to the final section which is all about your extracurricular activities so this is a place where you can list your extracurricular activities all your volunteering experience or if you know any other languages the main purpose of this section is to let the hiring managers know what additional values you can bring along with you provided your additional values should be related to the position you're applying for if you have something which are not directly related in some way or the other, consider removing them. For instance, these are the few examples that I have highlighted here. Plus, as the world is getting smaller and smaller, especially in the job market, knowing a second or third language can always put you at an advantage. And if that is a requirement of the job, for instance, if there is a requirement where they want a bilingual, somebody who has experience in english and french and if you know both the languages in that case i would recommend highlight your language experience on top of your resume instead of writing about it in extracurricular activities so you can put it somewhere next to your job title so next to your job title you can put it in a bracket bilingual english french whatever you know if that's a requirement of the job now after you have completed your resume writing i would recommend review it line by line and ask yourself this question will having this on my resume improve my chances for a job interview if yes then keep it or if no then consider removing it as promised here's my bonus tip for you always try to jot down your accomplishments as and when they happen in your life and you can do so by saving things somewhere in Google Docs or email yourself so that you don't forget them with passing years. And you know, this really gets handy when you update your resume. I promise if you follow these strategies, 
you will definitely get an edge over the other candidates and you will also receive more interview calls by recruiters. And here's your chance. I would love to know which one of the resume section we just discussed seems most challenging to write. Let me know if I could be of any help. Also, I would love to know if you enjoy this session and you can do so by giving a thumbs up and subscribing to this channel so that you will never miss any of my future uploads. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time.